Trash the leg. You are watching Tibet this week, a weekly news on Tibet. His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Central Tibetan Administration. Top news of the week. His Holiness the Dalai Lama gives teaching to Tibetan youth. Sikkim visits Tibetan settlements in South India. UN Human Rights Chief urges China to protect linguistic, religious, and cultural identity of Tibetans. Representative Dr. Arya conducts workshop at Japan Parliament Building. Representative Rinsen Kengang attends International Tibet Network's cross regional meeting. Tinsi Yishi bags the Best Young Scientist Award of 2022. This week, during the two day annual teaching for the Tibetan youths, His Holiness the Dalai Lama taught in praise to dependent arising, followed by an Avalokiteshvara empowerment. His Holiness noted that the proceedings for the empowerment and teaching were being live webcast, and therefore, if their faith and commitment are unwavering, the devotees could receive the empowerment even being physically distant. His Holiness expressed hope in resolution of the Sino-Tibetan conflict and reaffirmed he may live for another 15 to 20 years. Chang Samol Olo Teo Cha and Peg Gange Di Rimbeg the Pages Situri Olo Teo Cha and so Chanzo Saja Kava Dei Vine Kanda in Chanju Sam Gomia, the Tony Tao Gomia. Sikyong Pemba Siring, who is currently on his maiden visit to Tibetan settlements in South India, met the members of the Tibetan community in Bangalore and Bailagopi this week. Addressing the administrators, led faculty and the students of the Dalai Lama Institute for Higher Education, jointly with faculty and staff of Menzi Khan College, Sikyong re-established the two primary commitments of the present Kasha, to firmly resolve the Sino-Tibetan conflict and to attend to the welfare need of the Tibetans in exile. The Tibetan community in Bailagubi gave a rousing welcome to the arrival of Sikyong Pemba Sring at the settlements on Tuesday this week. Sikyong also visited and addressed the faculty and students of the TCV school, followed by the monastic institutions including Sera J, Sera Me, Namdriling Monastery and Tashi Limbu Monastery. Sikyong taught all 13 camps in Diki Larso settlement, Purang camp and a few camps in Luxem settlement where he interacted with residents, students and retired staff of the Central Tibetan Administration. <laughs> Within a year of taking charge, Sikyong Pemba Sring had visited about 25 settlements across India where he engaged in various public addresses to ensure the public are made aware of the core commitments of the 16th Kasha and its activities. The UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michelle Bachelet, concluded her six-day trip to China on Saturday last week. With regard to situation of Tibetan people under Chinese oppression, 
the High Commissioner said in the end of the mission statement that it is important the linguistic, religious and cultural identity of Tibetans to be protected and that Tibetan people are allowed to participate fully and freely in making decisions about their religious life and for dialogue to take place. She said she has discussed education policies and underlined the importance of Tibetan children learning in their own language and culture in the setting of their families or communities. On the 27th anniversary of the forced disappearance of the 11th Pension Lama, Gindinchiki Nima, the liaison office of His Holiness the Dalai Lama for Japan and East Asia organized a workshop and press conference at the Japan Parliament Building Conference Hall. Mr. Ishikama Agimasa, General Secretary of the All Japan Parliamentary Group for Tibet, Professor Ishihama Yomeko of Waseda University, and Ven Kobayashi Shue of Super Samga were among the panelists. Representative Dr. Arya Tsewang Gelbo talked about how the world ignored Tibet's tragedy some 70 years ago and how it emboldened China and other totalitarian regimes in making territorial intuitions. In a press release, Representative Dr. Arya asked for the immediate release of the Pension Lama and his family and demanded religious freedom in Tibet. Professor Ishihama Yumeko of Waseda University explained the reincarnation system in Tibetan Buddhism and urged China not to interfere in this reincarnation issue. Around 30 people comprising Japanese lawmakers and staff, media people, Tibet supporters and Tibetans attend the workshop and the conference. Representative Rinzin Kengang attended the first ever cross-regional meeting in Barcelona from Friday to Sunday last week on the International Tibet Network's invitation. Representative Rinzin met with executive board members of the Spain-based Tibetan community and called for cooperation. Over 55 participants, both Tibetans and Tibet supporters from 18 different countries spanning from Africa, Europe, the Americas, and Asia gathered at the Casa del Tibet for the three-day meeting to discuss, deliberate, and maximize the effectiveness of the worldwide Tibet movement. Honorable Thubdin Wangchin and Mr. Thubdin Gyatso, members of the Tibetan parliament in exile representing Europe, were also in the attendance at the ITN meeting. Convened by the ITN, this was the first in-person meeting of the Tibet support groups since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. Representative Rinzin Kengang also met with former NBA basketball star Anis Kander Freedom and Vice President Pishinu in the European Parliament. A Tibetan student, Tinsi Yishi was awarded the best young scientist of 2022 and prior to that, he was a recipient of the leading research student award 2021 of former Soviet Union Republic. Tinsi Yishi is a Tibetan MD student studying at the Asian Medical Institute in the city of Bishikish in the Kyrgyzstan, former Soviet Union Republic. He completed his schooling at TCV Suja and high school at TCV Bailakupi. He also received many other achievements and appreciation certificates, such as from World Health Organization for his contribution to science and medicine and participation in programs organized by World Health Organization. That is all for this week. See you next time and have a great weekend.